Hello, today we're continuing in our series of GCSE Physics Revision, looking at circular motion. Let's consider swinging a ball round on a string. So I'm holding the uh, string in the middle. Here is the string, here is the ball, and the ball is going in a circular motion around as I swing it round. Newton's first law of motion tells us that a body stays at rest, well that's not appropriate here, or in constant uniform motion unless acted on by an external force. So here is the ball that is travelling at a velocity v in this direction and Newton's law says it would continue travelling in a straight line unless acted on by an external force. But this ball does not continue in a straight line. It's constantly changing direction as it goes round the circle. And that means there must be a force acting on it to cause it to do that. That force is an inward force because it's pulling the ball in. That's where the ball ought to go according to Newton. In fact, it's being pulled in. And that force is called the centripetal force. So if you want an object to go round in a circle, you have to exert a force on it called the centripetal force. Now you don't strictly need to know what the maths is for that, but I'm going to tell you anyway so that you get a better understanding of what's going on. That centripetal force will equal mv squared over r, where m is the mass of the ball, v is its speed or its velocity, as it's going round, and r is the radius of the circle that you're going round. And from that you will see that the force, the centripetal force you require to keep something in circular orbit, is directly proportional to the mass, so the greater the mass, the greater the force. It's also proportional to the velocity, the greater the velocity, the greater the force you need but it's what we call inversely proportional to the radius. That is to say, as the radius increases, the force decreases because radius is in the denominator. As this gets bigger, the force gets smaller. So in the case of the numerator, the numbers at the top, if the mass gets bigger, the force gets bigger. If the velocity gets bigger, the force gets bigger. But here, if the radius gets bigger, the force gets smaller. How is that going to affect what we are likely to do? Well, let's consider a car going round a bend. That bend is part of a circle, and that circle has a radius r. So here is my car, and it is travelling at velocity v, and it's going to drive round the bend. If it's going to drive round the bend, it needs a centripetal force. We've just shown that. What is actually providing a force to make a car go round the bend? The answer is, it's the friction between the wheels and the road. So here's the car, here's the road. As you turn the wheels to go round the bend, there is friction between the uh, wheels and the road, and that frictional force provides the centripetal force that is going to get your car to go round uh, that bend. But here's the rub. There's a maximum frictional force. If you try to overdo it, you'll just go into a skid. The wheels will not be able to grip the road anymore. So what is going to determine, given that there is a maximum frictional force, so there's a maximum value, if, frictional, if centripetal force is mv squared over r, there's a maximum value for this. What does that mean? That means that if your car is too heavy, high, too high a mass, it will not go around the bend, it'll shoot off and go off the bank at the top. Or if you're going too fast, if V is too large, you'll shoot off. Or if R is too small, you'll shoot off. So what I mean by that is if the bend goes like this, that's a very tight bend. Whereas if the bend is much more gradual, that is to say the radius is much larger than it is here, 
then it's much safer. So roads tend to try and have um, small bends or large radius bends, uh, gradual bends. If you have a very tight bend, then you either have to reduce your mass, which is not very practical, or you have to reduce your velocity. And that's why when you approach a major bend in the road, quite often you'll be advised to slow down because in order to keep within the maximum frictional force that you're gonna get with the tires, you need to have a lower velocity. We've spoken about this car getting its centripetal force from the, the tires on the road. It's the frictional force that is providing the centripetal force. What else can provide centripetal forces? Well, in the case of the ball that we were tossing around like this, uh, the centripetal force is the tension in the string. I am holding the string, the ball is at the other end, there is a tension in that string, and that is what's providing the force. I could pick up a bucket of water, full of water, and I can swing it over my head. And at A level, if you see my A level videos, you will see that it's perfectly possible to do this, provided you do it at the right speed, it's perfectly possible to do this without the water coming out when it's above your head. The bucket goes right round and you don't get soaked. Don't try this at home because you do not yet know the formula. But the question is, since this is going round in a circle, where is the, where is the centripetal force that's causing it to do so? And the answer is, it is of course, the tension or the force in my arm that is provided that centripetal force. What about the big wheel at the fair where uh, you go around in little, as it were, little buckets um, and the wheel takes you round and you get a nice view when you get at the top. That's circular motion. There has to be a centripetal force where is that centripetal force being exercised? Answer, through the spokes of the wheel. Similarly for a bicycle wheel, the rim will go round in a circle. What is providing the centripetal force? The spokes. What about the Earth going round the Sun? It's pretty much a circle, not quite, but it's pretty much as a circle. Here's the Sun, here's the Earth, the Earth is going round in an orbit. That is not a straight line. Therefore, there must be a centripetal force that is being provided that keeps that Earth in circular motion. What is providing it? In this case, the answer is gravity. You may remember that we came up with a formula when we were talking about classical mechanics earlier, where we said that the gravitational force between two bodies is a gravitational constant times the mass of one body, let's say the mass of the sun, times the mass of the other body, let's say the earth, divided by r squared. That was a formula we derived in an earlier, or we showed in an earlier video, we didn't strictly derive it. And that is a gravitational force. And that gravitational force is the centripetal force that keeps the earth going round the sun. So here's a possible exam question. We have a car which has a mass of 200 kilograms. It is traveling at a velocity 20 meters per second, and it's going to go round a curve in the road which has a radius of 50 meters. So the road is curving and the radius of that curve is 50 meters. I can tell you that the maximum frictional force that you're going to get on that road between the tires and the road is 1200 newtons. And the question I want to ask you is, if the car continues to travel at 20 meters per second, will it get round that curve? Well, remember we said that the centripetal force that you require in order to get round a circle is mv squared over r. So in this case, the centripetal force you required is m, which is 200 kilograms, times v squared, which is 20 meters per second squared, so 20 squared 
is 400 divided by R, which is 50 meters. And that is going to be 1600 newtons. If you multiply that out with your calculator, you get 200 times 400 divided by 50. Well, 50 into 200 goes four times. Four times 400 is 1600 newtons. So the centripetal force required for that car to go round that curve at that speed is 1600 newtons, but the maximum frictional force is only 1200 newtons. So I'm afraid to have to tell you that on this particular occasion, the car is going to slide off the road. You may want to work out what speed would you have to reduce to in order that you would have a frictional force of 1200 newtons rather than 1600 newtons. You just have to redo this equation, but this time you have to work out what V squared is. You know the force maximum is 1200, you know the mass is 200, mass is 200, you know the radius is 50, what is V squared and therefore what is V? What is the safe speed?